people about communication, learning how do we connect, how do as humans we connect with each other. There's people that you've met in your life that you just click with almost immediately, right? You just see them and you're like, I don't like that person. Then there's some folks you just, you, <laughs> you just don't want to connect or something happened. And you just met them, right? So if we look at this funny picture here, again, I like happy faces. What do you see? Who can tell me what they see here? What's going on in this scene? Thank you. Okay, right? Okay, different smiles, different people. Okay, you gave them people. I still think they're big smiling faces, but that's cool. They're people now, okay? What were you saying? Okay, a little diversity going on. Okay, they look kind of the same to me, but anyway, okay. You guys are really thinking outside the box. <laughs> Different expressions. Okay, tell me more about the expressions. Emotions. What's going on with the emotions? Optimism. Sad. Okay, wow, you guys are deep. Let's think not so deep. <laughs> Let's pretend that we are at a networking function. Okay, maybe I should set it up this way. That was deep thought. Wow, diversity. Emotions. I was like, wow, you guys are early in the morning. Uh, let's think of a networking function, and here we see one pot of folks together, and we see this one gentleman or face here, and the others are not necessarily very impressed, are they? And then we see over here, this guy's not impressed. Now, this guy's noticing the guy with the happy face who thinks he's all that, but something's missing, isn't it? Okay, so now if I add this one bowl, <laughs> well, yeah. Have you ever noticed folks that they think they're doing the right thing, but sure enough, they have, don't have a clue. They're missing it, totally. Okay, sometimes you've gone to an interview, and you thought everything went well, but then it didn't. No callback, no, I mean, something was wrong, wasn't it? You missed it. You must have missed it, right? Because everything in your mind was perfect. But yet, only somebody outside can tell what's going on, right? When they're outside the circle, they start to see what's happening. So today, with this presentation called the 30-second pitch, our goal, I speak plurally, my goal <laughs> is to help you to go ahead and not feel like everything's perfect when it's not. To actually know for a fact and feel confident that today you've made an impact without question. That you've left somebody with the exact impression you wanted to leave them with. That you left that day achieving your purpose. That's exciting when you do that. Not like this guy here where he thinks he's on seventh heaven, but everyone else is not on his same page. And only that guy on the outside, which we'll say is me, <laughs> he didn't have a clue. Okay? Let me give you an example of this. The Wright brothers, we all know them, they kind of did that little flight thing in Kitty Hawk. What happened was, is that as soon as that flight happened, anybody remember how long the flight was in the air? Okay. Yeah, it was 59 seconds. It was a really short flight from here to there. But it was flight. It wasn't floating, it was flight. So they were all excited. They called their sister via telegraph back then. And they wrote, sis, 59 second flight, very excited, we'll be home for the holidays. Stop. The sister was so excited about the news, she went ahead to the local paper and gave it to them and said, here, my brothers. The paper that next day said, local boys, Black shop owners will be home for the holidays. <laughs> True story. Missed it, didn't it? Totally missed that point. In communications, our goal is to leave that first impression, right? So the first part of first impressions is this question I found. Are you an extrovert or are you an introvert? Who here believes they are an introvert? Raise your hand. Okay, that's a lot of people. Cool. How many believe they are extrovert? Raise your hand. One, two, three. Okay, great. 
My question, my answer is maybe both, right? There's certain times in your life that you feel like you're an extrovert, right? And there's certain times in your life that you feel you are most likely an introvert. I'm a wallflower. My assessments that I've taken over the years have said to me, and I quote, that I am an introvert in an extrovert's body. <laughs> that has been the results. Because of all the surveys I've taken, all the assessments, my good friend Mac encouraged me to do that when I was just starting out in business, show that I have this ability when I'm in front of the room and have to get the job done, I will be that extroverted leadership type person. But to the other folks, meaning my special people, my wife, my very close friends, I am the soft-spoken individual that just wants to be alone. I like being alone. That's my favorite time. Now with kids now, and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so that's really what it is. It's like you have to decide which one are you. Get that out of the way. I am an introvert. Done. But I must be an extrovert when the time comes. I must get out of my shell immediately when the time comes. It is imperative. That is step one. That is step one for all of you as of today. You must be extrovert. Now, did I say you must change the way you are? No. You are who you are. You've been purposely made. Don't change that. You're an awesome individual. Each and every one of you that I've had the chance to speak to are awesome. You have a purpose in this world to change something. But you have to express it. You can't be a wallflower in opportunities like these. You must be extra. You have to get out of your shell. Okay, so we're, we need to immediately make that impression now. That your goal is to emulate someone who enjoys life. You must emulate someone who has been blessed. You must emulate someone who totally, totally is excited about meeting someone. Because they can make an impact. Now, did I say anything that's off the wall? Really, right? Aren't you blessed? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food? Right? Aren't you excited to be able to meet someone that potentially could be that opportunity that you've been waiting for? See? It's all true. So we now just have to act that way. We have to express how we really do feel inside. Take out all the negative stinking thinking. Push it aside. We know those circumstances are there. But at the time when we need to be here, or in front of that interview, or in front of that individual for coffee, it's time to show. It's time to be bright and excited about life because you have a reason to do so. It is exciting to be alive this morning. The alternative is wasn't very a good thought. <laughs> so that's what you have to do now, is get that heartfelt emotion out. And now you will be an extrovert at that moment. It's simple. It's not difficult. It's simple. Now, the process of first impressions is very important. Because what I've discovered over the years of networking and chatting with people, and especially through my children, I find that I learn so much about these kids. They give me my best material. <laughs> there are particular characteristics of first impressions that we have to kind of figure out and know that they exist. Otherwise, we're living in a fantasy. The first one is the physical first impression. When Adam was first presented to Eve, the biblical scriptures say, he said this fancy words, you are the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh, you are amazing. In English was translated, wow! <laughs> you look hot! That's really what he said. That was a physical first impression. We have that. We are naturally like that. We see somebody, and as men, I will speak as a man, there are certain attributes of women that I will immediately be attracted to. It's normal. That's the way I was built. We men physically think. <laughs> we think with our eyes. We absorb things. So we physically Look at things. So when you have a first impression, you have to physically be ready for that first impression. 
You kind of heard Kurt alert to it very quickly. He saw my tie today, the one of three. <laughs> That's important, right? You would not go to an event dressed in a certain inappropriate way, correct? Now that's not to say, I'm, not try I'm trying to be very critical on this. There are certain functions that we know there's a certain way you have to dress. It's just, <laughs> bless you, it's just etiquette, it's protocol. Okay, so if you have a trouble with that, meaning trouble that you just don't like dressing that way, you want to be avant-garde, you want to be gothic, let's say, <laughs> it's not going to have the best first impression in the situation that you're trying to take advantage of, is it? So the physical is very important. Also, we learned from our friends Cindy Martin and Dorothy Merchant, there's a certain physique that we have to keep clean. The shave, guys, the ladies, the makeup, not too much, not too little, just right. Our nails, even our belt buckle. <laughs> All of these things are physical parts. They're just necessary. So our first impression, that we have total control over, don't we? Okay, we have total control over that. If somebody doesn't like your hair, that's their problem, it's not yours. Okay, now if your hair is pink with purple, that you have control over. And if it's not Breast Awareness Week, you are really outside. Okay, yeah, so? Make sure the car is clean. Yeah, yeah, the car, all those things. We've learned those etiquettes, and I want you guys to grasp those, because they're extremely important. I hate that you mentioned car because that's the one thing I'm still working on. <laughs> My daughter's keep reminding me that's the problem. Is that these little five and seven year old keep saying, Daddy, clean your car. Oh. Excuse me, you didn't hear me. In three interviews, they have gone out and checked my car. Oh, really? Oh, 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 oh. So that's even detail. Okay. So car, clean. No questions. But that's a physical. You see, those are physical attributes. So first impressions, physical, you just have to get them right. Okay? Not overchanging yourself, but you just have to get them right. Because that's what people expect. Now, for those of you that are having trouble, like getting clothes or something like that, maybe your economics, I've been there, trust me, that's what I'm telling you. Okay? The thrift stores around here are awesome. The Salvation Army thrift store, the Goodwill thrift store, they have some high quality stuff for no next to nothing. Polo Ralph Lauren jacket for five bucks. Men. Okay? It's worth going there. Go to the thrift stores. I support, of course, the Salvation Army thrift store, but the Goodwill is also good. <laughs> they are awesome. They have a great assortment. And what's neat is that some of the local celebrities here have donated some of their clothes to these places. You might be wearing one of the local news channel anchors' tie just because he donated it, and you're only getting it for a buck. So please think of your physical attributes, not as something that is necessary in the sense that I gotta change the way I look. No, you just have an etiquette protocol you have to follow. Emotional first impression. Have you just ever met that person that's like a wet mop? I mean, really, they just approach you and it's like, well, I didn't wanna be here, I'm just sad. It reminds me of that character in Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore, see, you all know it. Eeyore, the little blue donkey, he just was always, always down. But he had the funniest humor, though, didn't you think? <laughs> but, he, but he got it. See, if you come across that way to people, that's not a good first impression. That's going to limit your ability to connect. Now, we all know that you have stuff going on. I have stuff going on. It just is. I've had a lot of friends who have died of cancer, who are facing cancer right now, all this sad stuff. Friends like you who are, who are unemployed right now, and I pray for. But I have to know that that's in a bigger power control right now. I need to focus on me. I need to focus on me. So emotionally, i got to be on a high when I am meeting somebody anyway. I've always done this to this day. It was taught to me at an early age. Anybody ever ask me how my day is going? It's never less than great. Because I have more reasons to say it's great. Didn't we just talk about that? I woke up. That's step one. Ooh, I still breathe. <laughs> step two, the roof is still intact. <laughs> step three, 
Step three, the car has gas. Step four, I mean, go on and on. You can count all the blessings you have so that you know that you have a reason to say it's great. <laughs> it really is. Please say it's great. Go ahead. And, how was your day today? It's great. It's great. It really is. It really is. So that's the emotional impression you have to hit on somebody. Have you ever been in front of somebody who's just having a great day and somehow that stuff seeps onto you and your day starts to feel different, right? You're suddenly smiling with them and you've forgotten what you left on at the house when you left, you know, that type of thing. That's emotional first impression. You've made their day. So they must feel good about you. That's important. Visual. Remember I talked about this, those of you who are in the session on communications, your eyes are the windows to the soul. My eyes must be lit up and focused on the individual. If you've ever been in front of a person who conversates, and I, I love this, let me do this with this gentleman, you're going to like this. I'm going to shake my hand, they do this. <laughs> you ever seen those folks? They turn around, you're, I'm shaking your hand, but I turned around. That's not a good first impression, is it? You know what I do to those folks? Stand up one more time. Go ahead, shake hands. Now, now, you turn around. Go ahead, turn around. <laughs> Did you see that? You, just, you might have, I pushed him towards me. And I made his eyes look at me. Don't accept anything less than eye contact. Visual first impressions are very powerful. When they see my eyes through these little shaded glasses, they will go ahead and know that I'm seriously looking at their soul. I want to know who they are. I can read a person through their eyes. You've done that, right? You've done that when your kids are looking at you and you're like, go ahead, look at me. Tell me again that you didn't do it. <laughs> Why do we do that? Because the eyes tell you whether you're lying or not, do they? They do. That's why you do it. That's why you want a, a visual first impression. So that when I look at you, or I look at you, or you, you know that I'm seriously excited to be here. Yes? Oh. But that's a cultural thing. There are some cultures that they will not look you in the eyes, and it's considered incredibly disrespectful mm -hmm. to look I haven't seen too many of them, though. Because if they're here in the U.S., and they're operating companies here in the U.S., they are adapting to American culturalism. Because... They're here. Now, if you're applying for a company internationally, I would say that's the exception to the rule that you should do what you're doing. Research the culture so that you know exactly what to do or not to do. That goes back to our friend Cindy Martin. She was talking about the card and handing the card to somebody and making sure you know how to read it because in Japanese culture, that's extremely important. Chinese with two hands. Chinese with two hands. Next. So if you're applying for companies like that, without question, what you're saying is valid. But in the normal sense of American local companies here, this is completely valid because they don't get it as often. They feel it's politically incorrect to stare at somebody too long. You're invading my space. <laughs> but no, I'm trying to tell you, I want to know you. I want to see you. I want to know, are you really being authentic with me? Right? Just like when that child doesn't look at me because they know they broke it. I know. That's fine. But in business, we're doing the same thing. I can read into somebody once I laid out the price if their eyes are telling me they really don't get it yet. And I will address it immediately. Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, you seem to be uncomfortable with what I just said. How'd you know that? I don't know. Is it true? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about it. Now you're in control. See, nothing's, nothing's surprising. You're not without a clue. You have all the clues. That's why it's important to visually see something. Use your eyes. Audible. I think I scared you when I yelled, didn't I? <laughs> your voice. Your voice is your strength. Your voice is what tells people if you are interested or not. I'm so glad to be here. Really, I am. 
I could be doing a million other things, but I want to be here with you. <laughs> See? It doesn't exactly give me the curve, but when I'm in front of people and I'm excited to see you, I'm glad you're here. Have a seat. Let's talk. It's just either caffeine <laughs> <laughs> or there's somebody that really is happy, that has energy. I want that energy in my company. I got a bunch of folks that are just doing minimum. I want somebody who's going to take me to the next level. I want my firm to be excited in the morning. You could be that guy. Audible. When you're in that interview, when you're presenting yourself to someone across the room, you want your voice to shatter the sound barrier. Because there's other people talking in networking functions. Everybody's talking. You have to project your voice to their ear. You can't be quiet. If you value your space, I don't want to get this close to your ear. I can just project my voice. Take, Again, a, take a microphone with you, right? <laughs> take this thing. This is what's important. It's the audible first impression. If you've ever introduced yourself, here's what I normally hear when I'm at functions and know that they're missing something. I say, hello, nice to meet you. My name is Angel Barrero. And I always turn to them. And they'll go, my name is Jackie. <laughs> With company XYZ. And suddenly their voice goes up for the company. But it didn't go up for their name. Your name is more important to me than the company you serve. They will say the company always hard, but their name, they're like stumbling all over it. My name is third generation, Angel Guerrero. There's a proud tradition in my family to keep passing the name along. My daughter is Angelina. My son who came later is Angel Gabriel. I kept the tradition, but what I'm teaching them as my daughter's seven, is to extend your hand to greet people and say her name loud. A seven-year-old, you know how they talk. They're quiet. <laughs> no, I've taught her. I think you could see it. I'm a tough dad <laughs> to live around. But I've taught her. I said, say your name loud so they can hear it. That was a name given to you by God. Be proud of it. Then whoever you work for, that's taking the momentum now, right? Because if you start loud, you stay loud. You start with strength, you will finish with strength. So you gotta take that deep breath, and we'll talk more about this in our work, workshop piece, and get it out there strong, so everyone sees you, everyone hears you. So that audible first impression is extremely important. You want your voice to ring like a drum, so it vibrates the room. That's how you start. It's very hard for speakers, and especially who here sings? Sings in choir or anything like that? New singers, anybody? Okay, one, two, good. Don't you know that that first tune is the hardest one, right, to sing out? When you take that deep breath, you're getting ready to start, and it's like, that's the first tune. If you've seen American Idol, you know that, right? It's like that first note is like a critical note to say what's the rest gonna be like. If they start soft and go to the end strong, they'll get criticized about that. You'll see those professionals in the front tell them, you know, start strong. That first note is critical. Same thing in speaking. Your first impression is about your voice. This last point might be a little tough for some of you to grasp, but it's called spiritual. In the secular world, it's called chemistry. This is a tough one because it is one that is very difficult to track or build data on. It is that, quote, spiritual slash chemistry part of us. I think it just has to do with timing, in my opinion, but it is available to know when you're speaking to someone and talking with them that there's something that just happens. In dating, when you remember your spouse, how many folks are married here? Okay, now did your spouse get hooked on you? And I know men, you gotta, you gotta work with me here. Was it the physical attributes, men? No. <laughs> Emotional, not till later. Okay. Visual, no, you didn't pay attention. Okay. She, you were gawking. Audible, sometimes, depending how you were, but here. Women will understand this. 
It's just a spiritual thing. It's a chemistry thing. It's something that just happens. Clicks. Yes, the clicking. If you build these up, this will fall into place. If you build all of the physical, emotional, visual, audible to be powerful, to be everlasting, the spiritual will come together. If it doesn't, it wasn't your fault. It just wasn't meant to be. Some people we just will never be around. I have people like that, really. We just don't click. We just don't. Too many differences. Too many things that are different. But when you got all of these together, the majority of people you meet will click with you. They will click with you. So the spiritual piece is not anything religious I'm talking about. It's that chemistry part of our human nature. Okay? It's that sense of connection. I have a good friend of mine. His name is David. He lives out in Asheboro. And he's just been one of these folks that I think is well misunderstood. He's tall and lanky, you know, really on the awkward side, very soft spoken. But there's something about him I just enjoy being around. And he turns out to be one of my best friends. Will jump in front of a car for me any day of the week. I love this guy. This didn't matter. It was something here that happened. Because if I went by all of this, he would have been just awkward. <laughs> But it's the spiritual part that happened. When I got to sit with him and talk with him and see that he was an introvert and then he was an extrovert in an introvert body. <laughs> it's the reverse. So again, this is what you want to look at for yourself. Strengthen these. They're in your control. This will fill itself out and tell you if you're in the right place or not. Remember I talked, I think, a while back and some others resounded to that, that if you just don't like the person, you don't want to work for them. You don't want to spend the rest of your life in that company, do you? If you don't really like them, the money's not worth it anymore, is it? So it's more than just money, isn't it? That's what you have to focus on. Here's my key. The key to a lasting first impression is the impact of the message and messenger left behind. Sounds like deep. It was. It was at 2 o'clock in the morning. I wrote it. The key to a lasting first impression is the impact of the message and messenger left behind. So there's two pieces there. It's the messenger and the message. We all have that, we all heard that saying, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> well, yeah, you can, if the message wasn't sent right. The message might have been written perfectly, but if that messenger didn't deliver it well, you can't kill the messenger. That's why it's important for both to work. Now, impact, of course, is not, I spelled it capitalized purpose, because it, it is an acronym. It is an acronym. It has some deeper meaning. Has everybody got this one? I'm going to change it. One, two, three. Impact stands for something. One, influence. We've alluded to it. You have to feel confident and have power. People are attracted to that. People are naturally attracted to this influential piece that you expose. If they feel you're confident, if they feel you really know what you're talking about, they'll go with you. The reason I enjoy going to my one mechanic for my car is because he exudes confidence when he talks about what is wrong with my car. And he's been right each time. So it's been fair for me to pay him because I was confident. Have you ever been to that mechanic where you're like, this guy's lying. <laughs> my car didn't have that problem coming in. <laughs> He's trying to take my cash. Right? We know it. Influence is a piece of that just confidence. It's natural. You know a fake one. You see one. It's all true salesman. You need this. You really need this. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> That's what it's about. It's about that influence. It is the confidence you exude. Sometimes people call it leadership qualities. If you've ever volunteered, you're already exuding influence because you've stepped out. You want to be there helping people. People will come to you. 
You volunteered, I think, a lot, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, right? And and when you get tasks, they give it to you, and you're like, why are they giving me all these tasks? Influence. You've shown that you can be someone that can take charge. All of you have that in your specialties, in your fields. Exude it now. Feel confident that you're the best at what you do. That's influence. The next one is motivate. Man, there are so many people that need motivation in this world, don't they? Motivate means to be able to encourage someone to do something, right? Now, the speakers that you've seen come up in the room, you know that they motivated you, didn't they? They got your brain pumping. They got You do the same. If you've ever had your husband take out the garbage, you motivated him to take out the garbage. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. Trust me. <laughs> You motivated it. You made it happen. You showed influence. But you motivate people encouragement. Say positive things. If someone looks dressed nice, say it. That's a beautiful outfit. That's a beautiful brooch. You know, that's a, that's a great tie. I like that tie. You don't know if that person has gone through a zillion times of hours trying to figure out what to wear that day. And you gave them the compliment they needed. Or maybe that was what they bought that day because times have been tough. And they just, that was all they could afford. But now you told them it was worth it. Motivating people is powerful. When that complimented folks, it just, their expression on their face looked like that was the only compliment they'd gotten in months. Wow. We need to motivate our people. We need to motivate our people, our country. Power in motivation. Purpose. Whenever you talk to people, you must not have an agenda. You must have purpose to talk to somebody. Agendas are bad, <laughs> right? Oh, I know what you're trying to sell me, that Tupperware party thing you want me to go to. I got you, I got you. No, no, no. Purpose means I just want to leave an impact on you. I want to make your day. I feel that you need someone today, like me, to be in front of. Or I know someone that you could be in front of. Let's talk. I might be able to help you. I had some friends of mine that I invited to a major event that I had with the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club, the Gala. And I was encouraging them, motivating them to come. And they finally did. And I introduced him to the vice president of Polo Ralph Lauren. They wanted to meet that person. They wanted to meet him. And I knew that. But my purpose was to just help them. My purpose was to bring them there to something I know was going to impact their life. And the side effect was, hey, the guy from Polo Ralph Lauren just happened to be here. <laughs> Let me introduce him to you. He's a cool guy. He's on the council. He's helping us out, too. It just works out that way. You have to have purpose for talking to people. And you have to find this out yourself. I'm not saying that your purpose is mine by any stretch of the imagination. If it is, that's cool. But you must know what your purpose is when you get up in the morning, when you go outside. Is it just to find a job? No, I don't think it's that shallow, right? It's not just to find a job. You were created for something greater. You were created for things that just are exciting. You have gifts that people are waiting to hear and see. That's your purpose. So go out there with that attitude when you speak to someone. Then it becomes exciting. Then it becomes an impact moment, a connecting moment. Action. Some conversations were meant to just be started and finished. They're just like that. They're just like that. Women understand this very well when they just want to say, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Let's drop it. Yeah, my wife's like that. It's cool. <laughs> I understand that purpose. I understand that action that she wants me to take. Zip it. Zip it. Don't say it. But there are actions that we can do in conversations that really have purpose too. If you're talking with somebody, what is it that you want to create 
at the end of your sentence? Do you want them to reply? Do you want them to get you something? Do you want them to run over and introduce you to someone quickly? There's an action. You want to create that action to happen in that conversation. Because it's part of what you're there for. The action may be where you told them that that tie looked horrible. It didn't match anything. It was offensive, in fact. The action was, get that tie off now. Trust me, I got one in the car. <laughs> or it may just be simply as simple as, you know somebody that I really would like to meet. And after my presentation, I think we should connect. Can we get that cup of coffee? That's the action. Just like you did, right? That was the action. It was to get that cup of coffee, to get to know each other, see what happens. Worst case scenario, I made a new friend. I can sit next to them in church. <laughs> but it was better. It's a connection. It was a true connection. It's action. You want to present yourself to create action, something to happen. In your cases, it is to connect so that something might happen, a future interview, a future connection that might lead you to that new job opportunity or that new business or that new customer. Action. It's part of the presentation. Community. Community is one that I enjoy because it is about greater than just us. When you talk to folks, you have to show that you truly are part of your community. That you're just not, quote, living here and paying your mortgage to rent. You are part of the community. You are involved with the community. It was no accident that God put me here because he wanted me to serve the children of our community. I teach biblical studies to children in various organizations. I serve on the Salvation Army Council, the Boys and Girls Clubs. And now recently I got involved with this organization, the Center of Creative Leadership, and their Impact Greensboro program, where myself and 49 other folks are changing the world, changing Greensboro. We're going to leave an impact on Greensboro. We're going to do something about what's going on out there. Powerful. I do it because I like it. I want to leave something for my kids. It's community. It's not about me anymore. You see, so each of you, as you heard Kurt talk about and several of the speakers talk about, it is about the community you serve. It's about leaving, taking this time that you have and doing something with it. So now your conversations have more fullness to them. When you talk to somebody and they ask you, well, what do you do for fun? It's a hard question to some folks. They're like, well, I haven't had fun. <laughs> I wouldn't call it fun. Fun, but it's no it is I spend my time with children I spend my time helping them to understand God's Word I spend time helping them to have a mentor or a leader or someone they can lead by so that they know exactly what they want to be when they grow up when that time comes they can make fruitful decisions that's what I do for fun that's what it means spending time with you guys to get you off your chair so that you can become exactly who you meant to be. That's fun to me. You have to find your community. You should be involved in it. There's no question. The reason I connected myself so much with Eagle Resourcing Networks is when Kurt mentioned Eagle Charities. Bang. We were on the same page immediately. Because I said, that's what I'm passionate about. It's helping people. So your community is going to be part of your impact. You have to get involved. I think you're involved with like the arts. That's beautiful to create culture in our society, especially our city. That's full of creative people. You know, that's what's exciting. I'm working with a gentleman right now who we're gonna actually plan something, and this is in the Impact Greensboro, that will help these artist folks to know how to do business. Because they don't know business, right? Once they got their talent, their pieces, they go ahead and they don't know what to do with them. They don't know how to sell them. They don't know how to price them. They don't know how to do anything. They don't know how to network. We're going to help those folks. We're going to help them to get organized so that they can go ahead and become true business owners with their talent. Yes, ma'am? It's finding your tribe. Finding your tribe. Yes, I've heard that used. The substantial people, the sustainability folks, that's what they call them. It's 
tribe, connection. Again, you must do this to leave an impact. This is part of your dimensions. And then, of course, all of this builds trust. And I don't know what it is, but I see folks all the time that they will be hunting like crazy for referrals and references. They have to hunt for them. That's a big clue if you're having to go crazy trying to hunt for references. If you've done this pieces, the trust factor is easy. To go up to an organization or a person you work for and say, would you mind writing me a, a reference of my time that I spent here? They're like pulling out the big, big pen and starting to write down everything. They're like, yeah, you've been great here. I'm sorry we have to do what we have to do, but no, nah, I got you covered. I'm going to write something really good because you've shared with me all the stuff that you do besides coming here nine to five. You see, that's how you build trust. Trust is also, there's no agendas when you talk. You have people around you that can validate who you are. That's trust. A very quick story. One time a good friend of mine, who's back there, Kurt, there were some people that were violating my trust because they thought that he was a two-time scam artist. When they told me that, I almost was floored. I was actually offended. I could not believe what some people were saying about my friend. They were so off. It was unreal. And I had to put a stop to it. I had to get involved. I couldn't just sit back. Because it was just vengeful spite. That's all it was. There was no truth in it whatsoever. And it showed itself in the moment's time. You see, trust cannot be broken. I thank God every day that there are folks that really do trust me. That they like me. That they feel like I'm somebody they can leave their kids with. <laughs> trust is something you have to build in yourself. And you have to show it by doing the things that have purpose and meaning to people. And then they'll see who you really are, who your spouse loves every day. Everybody else has to see that too. Don't hide it just for the whole. That's how you build impact. That's what this means when you talk about it to people. To make impact work, you will need to believe that your connection will change the world. To make impact work, you will need to believe that your connection will change the world. It's that simple. Do not ever think that you are less than the perfect creation. You can't do that. You have no right to do that. I'll tell you that. You have been brought here for a purpose. Every detail of your life has been sketched on a parchment made of gold. With a pen spilled with blood, there's no question you can change the world if you just believe that. Okay? Does that make sense? Do I get an amen? Uh, sorry, okay. <laughs> it's like that. All right, this is one of my favorite stories. This gentleman, true gentleman, one of the best type rope artists in the world at that time. Obviously, black and white picture was in the late twenties, and he could do that whole act. He could go across a huge span of space on a tight rope with a wheelbarrow in front of him, and he would do it all the way across couple of hundred feet, and then back again. And the press was like amazed. They were just shocked. They said, wow, you're amazing. You're just unbelievable. One guy came up to him and said that. He's like, you really think I'm that unbelievable? You're the best. Are you sure you truly believe about that? I believe, man. You just did it. I am impressed. You are totally the best type of artist in the world. Really? Get in the wheel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really commit, don't you? If you truly believe, you have to get in the wheelbarrow. You have.
have to get in the wheelbarrow to believe. That's the final straw to all of us, to every session you've been through. It's about belief. The guy didn't get in the wheelbarrow, by the way. <laughs> we don't know him anymore. <laughs> Oh, the typewriter was? I knew you were going to ask me that, and I tried looking for it, I could not. Who I think it is. Yeah. Okay, it's probably right. The one Linda's, huh? Yeah, you're probably right. This is probably the first generation. Yeah, it's probably the first generation of the one He did lose his mind. Yes, he did. He did. And I think they have it on video, actually, too, which is kind of sad to see that. But. Mm -hmm. But this is what my point is. My point is. You have to get in the wheelbarrow. You have to now truly commit to this. That's the bottom line. We have been standing up here, myself included, per all the speakers, because we believe in you. See, we, we believe in you. We believe that you're here with purpose to make an impact on the world. Now we're just waiting for you to accept that belief. Some of you already have. You've shared some wonderful things with us. And we're so happy for you. We're waiting for the rest of you to also do the same. We want 100%. We won't sell it for us. So you have to get in the wheel. And that's what we're going to do right now. Each of you have a gift. On your papers that you got today, you can go ahead and reference your work book. You have one sheet that goes over the 30 second pitch. It has a little detail there, okay? It has information about what that pitch is all about. It's to leave that first impression in 30 seconds or less. Now you heard my friend Kurt, yeah, we worked out the advanced series, which is 15 seconds or less. <laughs> but this is, the, this is the gusto, 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time. 30 seconds you can speak easily 200 plus words. Okay, but it's what those words say that will leave the impression. It's what those words say that will make something happen. So there's a little guide there. I'm not, I'm going to borrow yours for a moment. There obviously has to be the introduction, you know, who you are, and your situation. Notice that, because we want to be clear what the what the environment is right now for you. Now we're going to talk about how the situation can be turned around to obviously the glass full versus empty. We talk about clearly articulating the talents you want someone to know you possess. I'm a big fan of this. What is the return on investment? Remember, we've heard this many times. You are a liability until you prove yourself otherwise to a company. You're a liability until you prove yourself otherwise to a company. That you are a return on investment, but you can show that right from the get-go that that's the attitude you have. That you are in a company to make a return. Okay? Personal qualities, accomplishments. Have an objective. What do you want to accomplish during this conversation? You must have an objective. You just can't sit and chat for coffee. Not even with my friends do I do that. I have an objective. I want to get to know them better, or I want to go ahead and work with them in some capacity. I want to be invited next year. <laughs> Something like that. It's just an objective. It's just a simple goal that you have. And we often call it fellowship with friends. That's all. But with business, you have to have an objective. You must have one laid out. And again, you see there seeking advice or learning more about the industry or finding the professional opportunities or job openings. And then offer open and friendly body language and smile on your face. This is all key. And then where to use your pitch, of course, and you have an example there. Then the other sheet is where you're going and already, my friend here has already started writing, which is cool. <laughs> you have a lot of space there because we're actually going to do a live self-evaluation and group evaluation of your 30-second pitches. The rest of the time here is to do just that. The time right now is a quarter to 11. We have plenty of time to hit at least a dozen of you, right? Because it's only 30 seconds time so you can do the math. So, what I want you to do is go ahead and begin to, we're going to split up into groups of, let me get the numbers here. Okay, I think I can do this. Groups of four or five. 
So go ahead and look around you and turn your chairs around and help each other to develop this 30-second pitch. The, breath, the, the particular environment that you're going to do this one for, okay, is not in an interview position where you're just one-on-one. -on -one. It is one of my favorite sessions, which is a networking group environment where, just like you saw here with the little happy faces, you're amongst a bunch of people who want to get to know you. One of them is your key contact for that perfect position that you want. But you don't know which one it is. But you're presenting them all four. Okay? And you have 30 seconds to do it. To shell out who you are, what you're there for, what you need, what you love to do, in that 30 seconds, you're going to work with your group to help each other right now. So everybody's got to practice on each other. And everybody's got to look at what it is that you're doing in these front of these four people. Or one of them, for sure, is the one you want to meet that will give you that opportunity if you just impress them that much. That much. Literally. And then we're going to hear them. So everyone can hear them. See how impressive I am to that. And they are to that presentation. Want to get a lot of them done. You have right now about 10 minutes to do this in. Because you know yourself better than I do, so it's only taking 10 minutes to put that much more. Okay, so turn around. Again, groups of four or five. So again, most of you are set up that way. And then move to someplace else if you don't feel you like the person next to you. It's okay. <laughs> uh, no, no. But just go ahead and develop this 30 second pitch. I will time you. <laughs> Uh, if you want to take a break, that's up to you. But you got 10 minutes too. <laughs> okay. How about, what is the set on the introvert? No, we're going to work together. Uh, okay, here's the question that was asked. I want to make sure I answer this so that way it makes sense what I'm doing. In the past, mm -hmm. you've worked by yourself pretty much to develop these things. Is it fun? Do you get very far? No. It becomes a UFO, an unfinished project. <laughs> So that's why I want you to work together because you might already have one, but you want to get feedback on it. So that these individuals who may or may not know you as well, you can see if you impress them and then it's fine tune it and write it out. And you're going to present it to all of us. Make sense? That's what we want to do. Okay? Here's a question. Yes. Yes. That's what you I'll be walking around just to kind of obviously see what you know the city has the markers. Okay, show that you're interested in the Martha was telling me about yeah, yeah. Um, it's called Springs. Really really they don't have all the speakers so and all they find out our biographies and uh, about the yeah. agenda. And thanks to you, we're going to do so this. Let's say you're in the company. Yeah. Yeah. You're a company. 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 you are I might be gone. They've already told me when you're last day. No, no. I'm just on the list. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. A and T. She works for A and T. She's been part of a huge network, I guess, helping with humans with their ethics. So, I don't know, whatever, whatever she does, she's an instructor. And, yeah, she said that she just was told. But I think she's been doing this online courses right now. Again, guys, there was one question that was brought up.
on the second note where it says show you are interested in their needs, remember I said that there's one individual in that crowd of four that's the most perfect person you would like to work with. So you're addressing that need, so it's obviously customized to you. I would love to do, I use the example of the arts. I'm working at DSW right now. It's a shoe store over at Chops at Friendly. Even though the other three may not have any interest in it, but that one person does. So that's the person you're really speaking to. It's better to be Yeah. My degree is in ceramics. I mean, I love ceramics. You're kind of being a little creative, and you're letting your juices flow. I want you guys to think of everything else I put in front of this and use that to your advantage. Work together. This is your opportunity to have other people that you're not going to get from to hear what you're saying to folks so that they can either be impressed or fix it a little bit so it does sound impressive. This is your opportunity. All right. Now we, we, can, we, can, we can pause it for here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah.